uh, let's start. Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to my second webinar. Uh, it's about creating, uh, configuring, and managing disaster recovery in Oracle Cloud for on-premise database. Uh, actually, I'm in a vacation now uh, in Turkey, in a different country. I'm from Azerbaijan. I'm in a vacation in Turkey, and but it didn't stop me to do my job that I love to present in a webinar. Uh, and let's do it. Okay, um, I'm I work as a database team leader at Azure Telecom. It's a leading telecom company in Azerbaijan. I'm Oracle Certified Master and Ace Director, and also authored two books. The first one is about arm and backup and recovery, and the second one is about the preparation for the OCM ELNG exam. If you haven't passed the exam, if you want to um, want to take that exam. Don't afraid. Just go to ocmguide.com. Download the free book of the book of the free PDF of the book. I mean, and start preparation for the exam. Also, blogging at kamalagaev.com and president of Azerbaijan Oracle User Group. So, um, whenever I present this uh, session, I ask, I make the uh, room survey and ask how many of the attendees. Uh, had a failure with production database that has not DR. Uh, this is a very critical question, and because um, you might have a failure of your production environment uh, that that hasn't DR. I have seen a lot of cases when you when you when you have a failure in your production environment, you open an SR to Oracle, uh, and they try to solve your problem. And whenever they see that there's no any solution, they either go to backup. Uh, but if the backup will take a long time, uh, I mean, recover. If, if the recover will take a long time, they ask you if you have a uh, if you have a standby database. You have a disaster recovery center. Uh, and I'm really interested how many of you still running mission critical database without standby. It is also very very critical. And how many of you place a standby database in the same data center with the production database? So. Uh, I mean, it's not good scenario. I mean, it's not good design to put your standby database in the same data center with your production environment, because I will show you some slides about it. So in this uh, session, we'll give an introduction to Data Guard in Oracle Cloud. Um, we'll talk about security requirements of uh, Data Guard in Oracle Cloud. We'll see how to deploy the DR to the cloud, how to encrypt the on-premise database, as well as the Oracle Cloud database that's running in Oracle Cloud. We'll see how to instantiate data guard standby and manage data guard in the cloud. Okay, um, let's let, let's see. Let's take an example. Like we have a we have a control file and we lost the control file. What 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 will happen? And all of all of you know that the database will crash, right? And you will tell me, okay, I have I have multiplexed my 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 control file, and I have another control file. And what happens if you lose all the control files? So the answer is, uh, I would put them to the disk, and I would uh, manage it with ASM. What happens if that disk completely fails? So you can tell me that, okay. All the disk group will fail. I mean, with with, with the long all of your, all of your uh, failure groups, I've seen a lot of cases when the DBA put the control file in two in a normal redundancy and the disk group fails with along both failure groups. So uh, the only most of you, uh, it was me. Put the data guard in the same data center, and it's not it's not a good design. Uh, they might be a fire in your data center, and tomorrow morning when you open the gates of your data center, uh, the door of your data center, and you'll see that your primary database and your standby database are standing, uh, uh, I mean, burned out. Or what's going to happen if there's an earthquake? Uh, or, 
or there's a food <laughs> and you will you will just swim in your titties and uh, see your primary and standard database failed altogether. So, okay, um, and if you put your database, standby database in the same data center, uh, it might fail altogether, okay? And you'll get a lot of uh, calls and uh, from annoyed uh, users that they are not able to establish a database connection, right? Okay, um, so it's a it's a good idea to put your disaster recovery to Oracle Cloud uh, using Oracle Database Cloud Services. You can configure a data guard utilizing a preparation service or high performance service, or you can use Active Data Guard utilizing extreme performance service or exit data service. And I will talk about these um, services in more detail in, in the next slides. So. Uh, DR, I mean, disaster recovery in Oracle Cloud provides the following capabilities. I mean, uh, you are able to monitor a standby database. You can perform switchover or failover uh, from on-premise database to the standby database and convert it back to synchronized standby mode. Uh, you can build a development and test environment based on the standby database. Uh, it's, it's, it's better to offload the redundant production workload to the Oracle Cloud, and even you can offload the backups to the cloud as well. When you put a database in a production environment, you sign an SLA, right? So there are mainly three points in, in service level requirements. The first one is availability. It's about RTO, which means recovery time objective uh, that describes maximum acceptable downtime should an outage occur. So when you put a production data database in a production environment, you have to uh, give uh, the time. You have to give a time. Uh, that is acceptable for the downtime. If the database size is small, uh, you can you can uh, you can calculate the restore and recover procedure and tell your management that if my database fails, uh, it will take half an hour to restore the servers from the scratch. And if it's okay, it's acceptable, then then go with it. And you don't need a standby database, right? So the second one is data protection. I mean, if your database is uh, size if the size of your database is uh, 10 terabytes, it's going to take a long time to restore and recover, and it's acceptable. And that downtime, time of time of the downtime is not acceptable for the management. So uh, the second one is data protection. And it's about, it describes the maximum amount of data loss that can be tolerated. I mean, uh, I don't think that there is any, uh, any database that can tolerate a loss of even the single, uh, single row. So, uh, we, we, I mean, uh, so, so it's, it's a it's a main point, and you might lose your archive log files, or uh, but if you build a disaster recovery, you ship those archive log files to the standby database, and you have those archive log files over there. I mean, you have that data over there. So the the, the last one is about the performance. So. Uh, it's, it's about the database response time. It might be different after the failover. So you have, you are running your production database in three node rack environments, and you created one node, a single node disaster recovery. And whenever you perform the failover or switchover, um, I mean, uh, the performance uh, will will degrade. You will see the degradation in the performance because your applications are kind of, were connecting to three nodes. Now they're connecting to one single node. So, um, so that's why it's better to be with the same environment in the standby database as well. There are some. There are a lot of security requirements when putting your database uh, in the cloud. Uh, first one is. Um, I mean, actually, uh, you have to use TDE, which is transparent, transparent data encryption to encrypt the primary and standby database, okay? So, uh, I mean, it has additional CPU audit because every time you encrypt uh, the CPU cycles to calculate the encrypted and decrypted values. Uh, so uh, it comes with lower data compression and and there is there will be additional management. You can you have to also you have also encrypt 
the network as well uh, because you ship the redo redo entries redo change to the Oracle cloud to the standby database and those redo changes have to be encrypted as well um, before starting uh, talking about the TR, actually we have to you have to create a Oracle cloud account then you have to create a uh, configure a network, encrypt the network, encrypt the on-premise database, then create a standby database, perform the switch over and failover, and enable the runtime monitoring. So uh, if you haven't uh, created an Oracle Cloud account, go to cloud.oracle.com and start creating a new Oracle Cloud account. It's very easy, and you will get a month complimentary pass uh, for for the cloud account, which is which is enough to perform a lot of tests during that period of time. You can you can create a, you can create a the standby database with along the all with along the primary database uh, in the Oracle cloud, um, or you can create an Oracle cloud, or you can or you can create a standby database for your own primary database. I mean. Uh, it's very easy to create a standby database uh, with along the primary database in the Oracle Cloud. I mean, uh, it comes with a uh, specified graphic user interface, and it's very easy to perform a switchover and failover uh, by by, clicking, by by few clicks, right? So, but in this session, we are talking about how to create a standby database in the Oracle in the Oracle Cloud for your own premise database. Um, so uh, you create a cloud account, I mean, you create a database uh, database service, and in order to create a database service, you have to uh, you need to have a uh, the public and private key. So you go to uh, any key generator and just generate the public and private keys. I use public key generator; it will create public and private keys. Then I provide this public key to. Uh, to during the, the configuration, and then whenever I connect to the I SSH to the cloud node, I will use the private key uh, to connect. And in a few minutes, it will provide me in with a new database service, and I will use uh, the private key to connect to SSH to my compute node, and I'm there. So uh, the Talk about the configuring network. Um, in order to uh, configure a network, uh, we have to enable the SSH tunneling to the cloud, and secure uh, the port connectivity to the cloud. We will create a security IP lists. Then we will create a security role uh, and figure, I mean encrypt the network uh, in order to have a prompt from Oracle Cloud to on-premise on machine. So by default, uh, 1521 port is disabled. So we we have to remove the default listener. It's better to remove the default listener and create a new security list and add on-premise uh, IP list. Uh, so we are connecting from on-premise to Oracle Cloud. Just provide IP list of on-premise database uh, and the security list, and it will accept connections from only those IPs. Then you create a security application and provide a new port number. It's a it's a Port is a new port for the listener, and then you create a new security rule and configure a standby listener or a file to use a new port. So uh, next, uh, the, you have to encrypt on-premise database. Uh, actually, in Oracle Eleven G, it's not possible to encrypt the existing table spaces, and it's just encrypt them. And you have to create a standby database. Encrypt the standby database and then perform the switchover and encrypt the previous primary database and switch over back. So let's see how it works. First of all, you have to uh, create a standby database anywhere. I mean, just create a standby database and for your for your prop for your uh, production database, create an encryption valid, set a master key. We'll see uh, we'll see all the steps in more details in the next slides. Then you have to copy the valid files to all nodes in the configuration. Place the standby database in mounted state with the recovery stopped. Okay, on the standby database, then we encrypt data files in, in place and in parallel. Uh, then we perform a switch over to the new standby database, and on the new standby database, we place the new standby database in a mount state again and stop the recovery process 
encrypted data files in parallel in the mount mode, and then uh, restart the redo apply and perform switch over back. And as we encrypt our on premise database, and after after that we can uh, create a standard database in the cloud easily. So the first step is to create an encryption ballot. So set the ballot location that's going to our file uh, on all nodes on the primary and standby database using encryption ballot location parameter. And then create the corresponding directories on all nodes uh, and set the master encryption key by running alter system set encryption key identified by password. Then open the keystroke and set the encryption key uh, to create auto login ballot. Uh, create an auto login valve because whenever you shut down the database and you start the database uh the database will not start up i mean it will not able to online the data files because the data files are encrypted and you have to provide the password the encryption key so it's better to create an auto login and and be able to open the database without providing a password then restart the standby database to the mount mode and stop the standby database and bring it to the mount mode if it's in the mount mode, just keep it keep it in the mount mode. Make sure you stop the recovery. And, and next, we have to run alter database data file, blah, 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 encrypt command in order to encrypt all data files. So if you have a lot of data files, um, join with all tablespace and with all data file views and just encrypt and get that list of uh, in list of uh, alter database data file encrypt commands and run them on the standby database. So uh, you run it, you can you can convert data files, you can encrypt data files in parallel, uh, convert them and uh, encrypt them. And it's better to use a DB verify tool to confirm that, to, that all blocks are encrypted. And after that, start the recovery process and make sure the databases, both databases are in sync. Next, perform the switch over to the primary database. Um, so that's why, that, that, and after that, perform the same steps, uh, steps and perform the switch over back to your primary database, okay? And uh, using these ways, I mean, using these steps, you will be able to enable T TDE encryption uh, of your on, on of, of all your all, all your files data files so how i mean there are a lot of ways to create from the standby database in oracle cloud um the first one is you can you can create it from the on-premise database or you can create from oracle database backup cloud service so uh, let's see how we can create standby database from on-premise production database it's 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 very easy i mean i i'm pretty sure you have most of you have already done it um but first of all, you have to configure promptless SSH in both on-premise and cloud hosts using SSH key again. Uh, for those of you who have uh, built uh, the Rack database before Oracle 11G, when the autom automatic SSH uh, key generation uh, promptless SSH connectivity option was not uh, was not uh, enabled in the graphic user interface, you were configuring promptless SSH between nodes using SSH key again. Uh, after that, you can you can install Oracle Green Infrastructure software uh, as well. I mean, it's an optional. Next, create standby read log files on the primary on-premise database uh, by running alter database at standby log file and drop the default database from the cloud machine. So whenever you uh, you create a cloud data cloud service, uh, you um, the that there is a, the, there is a database there's a default database will come with a uh, will be created automatically so but but you will use that cloud for your for creating standby database for on premise database that's why it's better to just drop that database uh, you can use drop database command or you can drop the database in the silence mode drop the default database from the cloud machine and configure the oracle net encryption um, not to configure the Oracle Net encryption, uh, you have to use encryption server, encryption type server, encryption client, and encryption types client parameters uh, by to provide the encryption uh, the encryption algorithm and enable the network encryption. Uh, next, create a password file and initialization file in Oracle Cloud Host. Uh, 
and um, edit the parameter file, provides the default parameters, and start the auxiliary instance in the cloud uh, in no mount mode. Next, create encryption valid, create password based case store, and create auto login valid, and create a standby database. So, how we can create a standby database? Uh, you can create a standby database using ARM and Duplicate from Active, Active, Active Script uh, by running Duplicate Target Database for standby from Active Database. Uh, it will not take a backup of your database, it will duplicate, uh, it, it will duplicate your database uh, directly to the Oracle uh, cloud machine. Um, if, you have a, if you have a space, I mean, if you have a free, free space to store your backups, so you can, you can store your backup, uh, or you can take an ARM and backup and just move your ARM and backups to the cloud machine and restore the database uh, from the ARM and backups. But um, it has, the, the, this option has some overhead to your CPU and, and on-premise uh, on premise hardware, but you can you can run it to build a standby database without having a backup, taking a backup and moving the backup. It will copy the online files to the to the cloud machine and perf perform the restore and recover and open the database, open the standby database. Or you can create standby database using Oracle Cloud Database Backup Cloud Server. So you have you don't have any you, you don't have a storage to store your backups and you don't have a storage to store your backups and you don't want to use active active database application uh, because of the overhead uh, hardware overhead so you can in this case you can use database backup cloud service so how it works you you get you purchase the oracle database you, you purchase the database back, backup cloud service you know to store your backups in the cloud and you install the cloud backup tool to the on premise database so you download that tool and from from the oracle.com, uh, it is called Cloud Backup Tool. You download that tool uh, to the on-premise, you unzip it, uh, create a valid and library file folder, create a folder for to store your valid and library files, run Java to install OPC install jar file. OPC stands for Oracle Public Cloud, and you provide a service name, ident domain, and ID and password. So whenever you purchase, whenever you get a, a backup cloud service, you are provided with identity domain, ID and password file, password uh, that, that are unique for you. So whenever you install the backup module, you provide this information and it will create, the, it will create the configuration file that will be used in our main uh, channel configuration in order to open the channel directly to the Oracle backup cloud store, cloud service. So uh, after after you have the OPC dot aura file, which is a Oracle Public Cloud backup cloud configuration file, you uh, configure the channel, uh, the default channel to SPT tape in Orman, and provide the library file, which is libc dot so, and provide a configuration file, and whenever. You open the channel to SPTV tape, it will open the channel to your to your Oracle database backup cloud service. And you pro it's better to encrypt it, en uh, enable the enable the compression and encrypt the backup and backup the database. After you backup the database, you install the same, I mean you install the cloud backup tool module to Oracle Cloud Machine and enable the encryption, I mean decryption or how you call it, huh? and then um, open the channel to your Tape library, I mean, which is not a library tape library, but uh, it is a connection to the cloud cloud service, backup cloud service, and starts restoring the database. You run restore database command. It will first of all you have to restore the parameter file and control file. Then you run restore database command, and it will restore the whole database uh, to the uh, from from the cloud machine from the cloud backup service to the to the uh, cloud machine, and if you you can rename the data files as well. Um, the next, uh, the managing data query in Oracle Cloud. So uh, actually, w whenever you uh, create a standby database, it's better to it's better to check the health, uh, perform the health check on your standby of your standby database by running 
either oral check or exit check. It's if you are running uh, send away within the exit data machine, exit check will be used. If this is if it's just default database cloud service, uh, you, you you can use oral check. So uh, when you run the oral check, it performs like four more than four hundred checks on your database and provide you with that with the output with the report where you can see that the uh, the status of the standby database in more detail and so make sure you use it every time whenever you you create a standby database uh, and also you can use active data guard to offload read only workload to the standby database to make sure that standby database is ready for a production so um, I've seen a lot of scenarios when when I ask the DBA that I have a standby database, uh, they answered yes, and I ask, have you ever tested your standby database in terms of if it, if it works and if it can take uh, the, the the load of your production database? And most of the time, I got an answer like, no, we haven't tested. So it's better to open it in read-only mode and just offload some read-only workload from, to your standby database and see if it uh, if it can take that workload. Uh, it's better to periodically place the standby database in read-write mode and to see if it is ready for the production load as well. I mean, in terms of insert, update, and delete uh, statements. So you can also take standby snapshot for the patch installation, test, and upgrades. If you are running Oracle 12C, you use Validate Database and, and you use uh, Data Guard Manager, run Validate Database command uh, in order to validate the, the standby database in terms of if it's ready to perform the switchover. You can also convert standby database into snapshot standby and then perform any SQL installation steps for the patch of the on the snapshot standby or use real application testing to see if uh, to 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 offload work to to run the load of your on-premise database in the Oracle Cloud and to see if the if it's ready for 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 this load. So uh, actually, if you are migrating from one hardware to one to a different hardware or from one database from one version to a different version, you have to use Oracle Real Application Testing Tool in order to capture the load on your production environment and then. Uh, replay that load uh, on your cloud machine on a standby database. Um, it's, I mean, in order to make sure that the it's ready to for the for, for the switchover, just perform the switchover. Okay, so perform the switchover to standby database and perform the switchover back uh, to the primary database again. So if you run the valid database command in Data Guard Manager, you will see the line which tells you that it's ready for switchover with the status yes. Perform the failover uh, and perform, I mean, shut abort, bring it, bring the database in mount mode and reinstate the database again uh, to put it to a standby mode again. Uh, and at last, there is a database, there is a tool which is called a data, uh, DBAA SCLI, it's common line interface, uh, data guard common line interface, which is available in the Oracle database cloud service that will uh, help you to run some data guard related, related commands in the command line. So if you if you want to get the status of the data guard, just run DBAA SCLI status and it will provide with you with the status of the data guard, or you can perform the switchover by running a single command or perform the failover as well. Okay, guys. Uh, oh, I've presented this session last time in the India, so I have thank you for an uh, Indian language. So uh, that's all for uh, for today. Thank you for attending this webinar, and uh, let me know if you have any questions.